In the last 40 years, sperm count and quality of sperm has dropped by nearly 60%. It is reducing by 2.6% per year. The commonly overlooked but fixable problems will be discussed today. In this video, I will discuss the important role the diet and the microbiome play in improving or decreasing male fertility. Male fertility is a very common problem. Half of all cases of infertility are due to male factors and affect 1 in 20 men. The main causes of male infertility are genetic, diet, lifestyle, smoking or, uh, or excessive alcohol intake, and environmental. The environmental cause is an overlooked one and includes contaminants in the atmosphere, in food, solvents, pesticides, etc. These chemicals affect testosterone and sperm production as well as affect the gut microbiome. This is a very big topic that I will be covering in the next video, especially what we can do about these toxins. Back to the topic for today. Diet and the microbiome are two important yet modifiable factors that affect fertility. They both impact fertility in multiple ways. To make any changes, it is important to know how the diet affects fertility. It is also important to know how the microbiome effect impacts fertility. We've already discussed diet and the many other factors that affect the microbiome, generally in my previous videos. My focus today with regards to diet is specifically on its effect on testosterone and sperm production, and you will see the, there are, these are crucial connections. As you already know, the typical Western diet is high in fat, red and processed meats, high refined carbs, and low in fiber. That diet results in an unbalanced microbiome that is more unfriendly bacteria than friendly bacteria, and this state is called dysbiosis. Dysbiosis results in damage to the gut lining, resulting in a leaky gut. A leaky gut allows toxins to be in the, from the gut to be released into the circulation. In the testes, these toxins can cause long-term inflammation and poorer function, resulting in low count of qual and quality of sperm and also abnormal sperm. The typical Western diet also leads to obesity. Obesity happens when, at the basic le or cellular level, there's an increase in the number and size of fat cells. There are two chemicals of interest here. The names are not important to remember, but for the curious, I'll mention the names. One is a hormone called leptin, and the other is an enzyme called aromatase. First, let's discuss leptin. In normal functioning, leptin informs the body that there's enough energy in storage as fat, and hunger diminishes. You stop eating, and the leptin level goes back to normal baseline level. But in obesity, where the food is commonly eaten unconsciously, where the mind is distracted, for example, eating while watching television or focused on social media, it removes you from the message that the body is sending. Your mind is elsewhere, and you don't get the message to stop eating. With more food coming in, the fat cells ramp up the production of leptin, trying to get your attention to stop eating. If this goes unheeded, higher and higher amounts of leptin are produced, and the body is unable to action the message. So the cells that receive the leptin message are overwhelmed and shut down. This is called leptin resistance. The body is unable to read that there is enough stored fat and the person continues eating, so there are chronically high levels of leptin. What has leptin got to do with fertility, you may ask? High levels of leptin decrease testosterone and sperm production. Before I discuss what actions you can take, let's discuss the other chemical that I mentioned, aromatase. Aromatase is an enzyme that is released by fat cells. Just to remind you, leptin is a hormone, aromatase is an enzyme. The function of aromatase is to convert testosterone to estrogen. In the non-obese individual, the levels of ar aromatase are not significant, but in obesity, with higher levels of fat cells, more of this enzyme is produced, and so more testosterone is converted to estrogen. High estrogen and lower testosterone in the male can lead to more fat being laid down and the vicious cycle of more estrogen leading to more fat, to more estrogen, to more testosterone being converted. So this obese individual ends up with low testosterone and sperm on two counts so far, leptin and aromatase, both produced by fat cells. The topic of obesity is a complex one and not an easy condition to treat, but one simple step one can take is to only eat consciously. That is, don't do anything else while eating, no TV, no social media involvement while eating. For all you parents with young children, this is a good habit to instill in them. Sitting at the table whilst eating with no distraction other than conversing 
and being present to the food being consumed. Now there's another hormone, if elevated, that also decreases testosterone. That hormone is insulin. Insulin is produced by the pancreas and is involved in the metabolism of sugar. The typical Western diet, on top of high fat, also contains high refined carbs that leads to high sugar levels. High sugar leads to high insulin output and, if chronically elevated, leads to insulin resistance. This is a precursor to type 2 diabetes. High insulin also affects testosterone production, but by another mechanism, that is via the liver. It decreases the production of a protein that acts as a carrier transporting testosterone to the required tissue. This is, there's a no, more complex knock-on effect that leads to decreased production of testosterone. So this is the third factor contributing to infertility. A further negative effect of high-fat diet is its effect on the testicular microbiome. Yes, the testes has its own microbiome, and a high-fat diet disrupts the balance there, resulting in inflammation of the testes that affects the production of sperm. So, so far we have shown that a high-fat diet, high-sugar diet that leads to obesity, leads to decreased testosterone and sperm production by a number of mechanisms, four so far. So far. Leptin, aromatase, insulin, and testis microbiome. The gut microbiome is also involved in the production of testosterone, but only from a healthy microbiome. But earlier we discussed that dysbiosis can lead to leaky gut that allows bacterial toxins to affect sperm and testosterone production. So a healthy microbiome is crucial for all the reasons that I've covered in other videos. This is the fifth factor. So bottom line, to improve sperm production and quality and to improve testosterone levels, one, get to a healthy weight by moving to a gut microbiome friendly diet. That means increasing the variety and amount of vegetables eaten, and as I always say, 30 different vegetables a week. Reduce animal fat and refined carb intake. The reduction of weight in the obese individual is the most important, as you've seen, uh, the gut microbiome is affected by. The testicular microbiome is affected and the hormones are affected. Number two, exercise to increase fat loss. Exercise has been shown to increase testosterone levels. Three, get adequate sleep, seven to eight hours per day. Four, stop smoking if you do. Five, reduce alcohol intake. Both smoking and excess alcohol reduce testosterone levels. Five, six, probiotics and prebiotics can also help. To remind you, prebiotics are the fibers that probiotics live on. Number seven, the last important area that I've not covered today is the effect of the endocrine or hormone disrupting chemicals in the environment. This is a big topic and affects both males and females and will be covered in my next video. There are also medical causes of infertility that only a medical doctor can diagnose and treat. So if you have not been investigated for infertility, your first step is to get investigated by a suitably qualified medical doctor. If you have already seen a doctor and have eliminated medical causes of, in, of infertility, you should consult a qualified practitioner to get to the specifics for your individual case. All I've given is information and must not be treated as medical advice. That can only come from a qualified health practitioner who can work out your specific needs. To make sure you don't miss out the other videos, please subscribe to my channel. I look forward to seeing you in the next video and thank you for watching.